Hello everyone. I'm Lady Deborah. And thank you for joining me tonight as we study our church school lesson. We have another beautiful lesson on tonight. And before we uh, begin our lesson, will you please just allow me just a few moments to ask God's blessing for uh, a better understanding on tonight. Dear Lord, here we are in the midst of the holiday season, taking time out to study your word. Lord, we want to thank you for this lesson. We want to thank you because it's such a beautiful lesson about the birth of your son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then, Lord, as we prepare us, as we begin to read and un have a better understanding of this lesson. Bless the bereaved and the sick everywhere, Lord. Please, Lord, have mercy on us all. And again, in your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hello, Irene. I see you. Good to have you. Who else out there? Sister Jackie Smith, good to have you. Well, since we're in this holiday season, a lot of us will be celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And our lesson is just that tonight. We have such a beautiful lesson and my prayer is that everyone will have a better understanding and a better meaning of the joyous occasion that we're celebrating this time of year. Now, if you're not a Christian, you might be celebrating uh, Hanukkah, a Kwanzaa or just happy holidays. So I want to include everyone on this lesson today. Now let's look at what we'll be studying tonight. As you can see, hello Robert Baldwin, I see you brother Clint, good to have you. This is lesson number four and we're using the Union Gospel Press book. Uh, our subject for tonight or the title of our lesson is the birth of the savior the time is 6 or 5 bc the place is nazareth and bethlehem in our lesson is coming from luke the second chapter and we're uh, studying verse 1 through 17 and i'll be reading from the new living translation but and i will also refer back to the uh king james version our golden text comes from verse 11, and it reads, As the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And now we see our lesson outline. We have four of them tonight. The first one is the journey, which is verses 1 through 5. The second is the birth verses 6 through 7. The third one uh, is talking about the angels, verse 8 through 14. And our last outline is rumors, uh, verse 15 through 17. Now, a lot of us have heard this story and we've read it and we've seen it in plays and gone to uh, great uh, performances of it but it's a different thing when you take time and study it for yourself and tonight we're going to be looking at the birth of the savior as our uh, subject says now last week remember we studied we were studying from god's promise of a savior well that's during the time the angel gabriel that same angel that had gone and spoken to zachariah this is and then Gabriel went and spoke to Mary about she was highly favored and chosen. Well, tonight we're going to study how this Savior is actually born and the events that took place leading up to his birth. Because you remember that it was uh, written long ago that he was going to be born in Bethlehem. Now, remember that Mary and Joseph are from Nazareth, but... 
the uh, some events are going to take place that's going to move them from Nazareth to Bethlehem. All right, let's look at our first outline. As you see, it's talking about this journey. Now, this is not a journey that's going by plane, train, or automobile. No, there will be traveling with the donkey and on their feet. So let's read our first five scriptures of this outline. And this is the New Living Translation. It says, at the time the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken by, oh, I pronounced, Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own celestial towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, y'all remember that? He had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. Look at verse 5. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. Now, we know we studied last week about this uh, espoused. Then the, the King James said espoused, which meant was he was engaged. She was engaged to him. But as we see, they, this, uh, Joseph is a descendant from David. Now, keep in mind that the angel had already told uh, Mary about all this and that the child would be from the line of David. He even told uh, David that when David wanted to remember when he was talking about building a temple and the angel told him that, no, you're not going to build it. Solomon built it, but there was going to be a long line of his uh, relatives that would be king and one would come and will reign forever. And this is where we are tonight. And this one is talking about this little baby. Now, as we see that this decree was sent out by this uh, uh, Roman Emperor, Augustus. Now, the decree was that they wanted to take a census of everybody who, from each individual place, they wanted to know how many people were there so they could tax them. It's, it wasn't like we have taxes today that when you go to work and you fill out a W-2 and you, you claim so many dependents and the government will deduct so much from your income. In this case, each person, each citizen had to go back to their ancestral uh, home to, to be uh, registered. That's what I read. It said they had to register so that they could be taxed. Now, they weren't taxed on their income. Now get this, they were taxed based upon how much property they had and how many people that were in their household. See the big difference? But it's almost the same thing here. You get you get a, a tax break when you have a lot of children, or a lot of uh, people that you're uh, taking care of. In this case, Joseph had to go back. So since he was a descendant of David, he had to go back to David's homeland, which was in uh, Bethlehem of Judea. It's just like saying, hello, Sister Brazil. Hello, Deacon Randall, Sister Ridgeway. It's like saying if, if, if I'm from, I live here in Texas, but my family, my family is originally from Louisiana. I would have had to go back to Louisiana and register so that they would have a complete count. Now keep in mind, I don't live in Louisiana, but my ancestors, that's where they came from. So that's what this is telling him that he had to go back to his own celestial hometown. Now remember, he's living in Nazareth in a little small village and he had to travel and go there and give an account of who he was, how much property he had, and how many people he, in other words, how many children who all lived in his household. Well, in this case, when he went there, and it's all this in verse 4, it talked about being a descendant of David, and he had to travel. That was, uh, everybody, that wasn't just an easy 
let me get load up the donkey and we'll be there by nightfall. No, it was a hard traveling road. And he had, and you see in verse five where he said, and he took with him Mary to whom he was engaged and now was expecting a child. This is the same child that we gonna see that's gonna be our savior. So he got Mary all loaded up. Now remember, uh, Brother Randall, they didn't have no, no Lexus. They didn't have a jet. Like I said, they had to travel by on foot so that they could get there. So David, he took Mary with him. Now, remember him and Mary hadn't really lived together as husband and wife because once she was engaged, she had, they had to, it took a year for him to get prepared to bring and go to Mary and become husband and wife. But they couldn't do that right then because he had to work and do all and get all this done. But he still recognized Mary as his wife because it said Joseph and Mary, his espoused wife, was with child, which was the baby, which was going to be born in Bethlehem. So to keep in mind that Mary was still a virgin. I know a lot of people can't wrap that around their head, but they had never consummated their marriage. Mary had never been with, a, been with a man, but he took her with him. See, he was being responsible for Mary, even though that wasn't his child. Hello, Sister Ruby. It, it wasn't his child, but he was responsible for Mary. And so he didn't leave her behind. You know why he didn't leave her behind in Nazareth? Sister uh, Ridgeway, because he knew that if he left her there, she would have been ridiculed. They would have talked about her. They would have said, see there, Joseph, that wasn't his baby no way. That's why he went on off and left her. He didn't want to be there with her. No, he was he was not going to leave his Mary back home so that they could uh, ridicule her and, and then put her down. Mary couldn't handle all that. You got to remember, she's going through a whole lot even just being pregnant. But as it says, it says, based on the prophecy recorded in Malachi 5 and 2, the Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem. So see, all those prophecies are coming true. There, there wasn't going to be no uh, rearranging things. No, they were going to be done just as the Lord had prophesied. And even Isaiah was talked about there was one that was going to be born of a virgin. So, as we see, they getting ready. They packed up. He didn't leave her. He didn't run off from a, a, a brother a Baldwin like some men do today. They'll say, that's not my baby. I don't, uh, they'll, they'll say, I'll be back, and they don't ever come back. And the lady, the, the woman is left to raise that child and feed it by itself. But you know, Joseph was a good man because you know, he didn't, he didn't, uh, when the Lord told him about what he was, what was happening, he did not fight it. He did not try to hide her. He took care of her. So as we can see, now they packed up, they on this journey, they going so they could uh, give an account of who they are. A lot of us want to backfire on the IRS and don't want, we claim uh, 50 children. And we don't, we make up names, we give them social security numbers just so we can get a cut. But in this case, Joseph was taking his wife. They didn't have any other children. We remember Mary was still a virgin. So they on this road, on a rugged road, going with a pregnant woman, riding on a donkey. But he took her with him. That shows compassion and love that he had for Mary. Isn't that amazing, you all? Hello, Sister King. That that just that touched my heart to realize that he was he was sure enough a fully grown man. He took on responsibility like a man after God's own heart. So, as we see now, she was expecting a child and riding on this donkey. Now let's look at what happens next. Next, as they get there and they register, we're gonna see something that really takes place that we, we can't even fathom about. Okay, let's look at our next outline. And this is the birth. Now she's traveled there, like I said, and she's, uh, they've gotten there, they're getting ready to take the census and do all this. Guess what? Mary goes into labor, you all. And this is what it reads, it's verse six and seven. 
And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for her. You see that? I like the way that uh, the New Living says that, but allow me to read how the King James worded. It's, it's more familiar to us when we read it like this. He says, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Why? Because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, you know, when you're traveling and we're going somewhere, we always make a reservation to where we're going to have a place to stay. Unless you're going to a town where it's family and they got a big house and you, you live with them. But in this case, they were going to take care of business. In the meantime, while they're there, Mary goes into labor. So, Joseph had to find a place for her to rest, but he went and he looked, but there was no room at the end. The King James says no lodging. You know why? Because there were so many people in Bethlehem there to register. Now, I don't know if it happened the day they got it all completed with the registration and giving account, or was it a day or two later, but in the whatever time it was, she couldn't travel back to Nazareth because she went into uh, labor. And as we see that he, he found her a place. They didn't have an inn. An inn, you all, is was re referred to like a hotel where they didn't have that. They didn't have a car to sleep in, like we see people sleeping in their cars now. And they didn't have no relative's house to go knock on the door and say, hey, let us in. And there was no hospital. Keep that in mind, ladies. There was no hospital for her to go to and give birth. So, what did he do? He found a place in a, in one place said in a, in a stable. It wasn't an inn. It was, in, I said it was a barn. And this is where he found and he made, made her comfortable and put her in there so she would be out the cold and not trying to uh, pitch a tent somewhat. So, as we see when it says, and while they were there, time came for the baby to be born. So that let me know she went into labor and then she gave birth to her first born son. Now somewhere I read again, Brother Baldwin, that uh, Mary had about six, about six, four or five boys more after Jesus' birth and some daughters. But this was her first one. And when it said that she gave birth to her first one, that let us know that this is the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Savior is coming to the world. It's going to be born. And just as the prophecy said, then look, it says uh, she wrapped him in snuggling strips of cloth. Uh, King James says uh, swaddling clothes. But they used strips of cloth to keep his arms and legs straight. It's just like Sister uh, King, when you have a baby, you they wrap him up, they wrap the babies up tight and snug so that they could still feel that closeness and not flopping their arms all around. But in this case, this is what they did back then. And then she laid him in a manger. A manger, you all, I didn't grow up on a farm. So I really had to remember and research to make sure what people used to say a manger was a feeding trough for the animals. Can't you, can you imagine our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ is being placed in a feeding trough where animals, all the animals come and slurp over and eat. This is where our Savior was coming to the world as a lowly human being. He was not in a palace being born or a hospital, not even a fancy tent but in a manger. And that's what he said, that there was no lodging. Because it was a lot of people there. They were all doing business and taking care of their senses as well. But this is what was prophesied down through the years that the Savior would come like this. But this is not what the Jews expected. They expected the Savior to come with a mighty force and, and 
with the uh, being a powerful captain leader or something. No, this was took on the form of a human being and a baby. So now let's look at our next outline, and we're gonna see it's gonna switch from her having a baby back to some angels. Now, as we see, it says angels. That means more than one, you all. And it reads, it says, that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Verse nine, suddenly and an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He says, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Verse 11, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, not Nazareth, Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others. A vast host, uh, Brother Baldwin, a host of angels. You think y'all can sing on Sunday and you got a mass choir? What do you think about a host of angels? It says, joined by a host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Y'all see that? That, let, now, let, let, me, let me pause here for a moment and read it how the King James said. It says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field lowly shepherds y'all not kings they weren't at a fancy restaurant it wasn't the uh the suite at the, the methodist hospital keeping watch over their flock look who they go look where the angels go to announce the birth of our savior he says and lo the angel of the lord came upon them now this didn't say it was gabriel it says the angel of the lord these are messengers and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were afraid. Now, you know, it was night, Brother Baldwin, Brother, uh, 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 Brother Clint. It was night. It was dark, uh, Sister uh, Ridgeway. And all of a sudden, this bright radiant of light appears, and this angel is talking to these lowly shepherds. Nobody fancy. Me and out there watching their flocks sleeping with them, eating with them, taking care of them. He says, and the angel said unto them, fear not. He says, don't be afraid. Can you imagine you in a dark place and the light shines all around you and you don't know where that light came from? He says, for behold, I bring you good tidings and great joy, which shall be to all people. You got the joy, but the joy gonna be for everybody. And then look what he says. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. Now these shepherds, if you notice in our text, they're not saying nothing. They're not asking no questions. <laughs> Sister Ridgeway, they're not asking no question like Zachariah questioned and had doubt. Mary didn't question nothing. Mary had one, uh, one little thing she didn't understand. Here we find these lowly shepherds. Now, you know they see some everything in the night. They were afraid. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't ask no questions, but the angel could see this. And he said to them, he says, you know, don't, don't be afraid. Don't, it's nothing to fear. He says, and this shall be a sign unto you. Now, they didn't ask for a sign. Remember, Zechariah asked for a sign. These shepherds are speechless, you all. They're not saying nothing, but they were attentive and paying attention. He says, and suddenly there was an angel of a multitude 
of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill towards men. Now they come there singing, okay, now somebody, am I the only one that's getting excited about this? They, heaven, open up and all these other angels are singing. Can you imagine what kind of choir that was? They were all excited. Heaven got excited when Christ was born. Are you excited? Do you get excited when we sit down and we think about it? the goodness that God gave us his son and how his son came to earth. The heavens opened up and they were just singing and having. Sister Ridgeway, can you imagine if we all gathered at all different places of worship and when we walk in, we think about Jesus Christ and we all break out singing it like the heavenly host. We could sing and shout down those brick walls. Here, this is what he's telling them. He says, glory to God, the highest, and on earth, peace. In other words, peace. He's bringing peace, not just to, to the little lowly shepherds, but to everybody he was going to do. He said, and good towards all men. That's what this Christmas season is about, the birth of a Savior who came to this earth so that we could be saved, and he gave himself. He was born just so he could die. Can you? Can anybody agree with me? We, I feel like I'm, I want to just close it out and say I'm gone now. I, I want to celebrate this again. Now let's move on to our last outline, which is uh, once the the shepherds, we're gonna see how they react, how they carry this good news. Okay, the rumors. Now I don't know why it's called the rumors, but it says rumors. When the angels had returned to heaven. Now, when they got through telling all them this and all of, they had the praise and the singing, what, what, what kind of musical was that? This is when the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that, that has happened. He says, which the Lord has told us about. Verse 16, they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in a manger. After seeing him, look what these old shepherds do. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. Glory, 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 glory. Can you imagine? Hello, D-Ray, love you. How can you imagine now when the angels, when they got through with their concert, uh, uh, choir singers, Jackie, y'all, when they got through with the concert of praising and being excited about this, the king has come. The heavens were celebrating. They disappeared. They went away. And then the shepherds, look, they, did, they didn't say let's pass the collection plate, you all. No, they didn't say we open up the doors of the church. No, they said to each other, let's go. I believe somewhere where it says they they uh they said to make haste. In other words, my grandmother used to call me in when I was playing and she would call my name and say, and make haste. That means get in a hurry. Haste just means to move quickly. So this is what they're saying. And 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 they got up and they went, they went to Bethlehem. They they couldn't have been too far because the angels came and announced the birth. So they were somewhere close by in the fields tending to their sheep. Can you imagine that here you are, you are a shepherd or you're a janitor or you're a cook or you're a maid and the angels come and tell you, you a lowly person, you don't have no stature, not nobody, little education and the angels come and tell you, look who, look who they went to. They didn't go to the king. They didn't go to the governor. They didn't go to the, the mayor of the city or the high ranking officer. They went because Christ came here for those who are we considered the least. He came here for us. So when they heard this and they shouting days and the, the musical was over, they turn around. They said to each other, let's go. They didn't, they didn't, like I said, they didn't pass the plate. They didn't open up the doors of the church. They got busy. They got up, got the flocks to move because they wanted to go see this. Because if the angels told them they were going to witness and see this for themselves, even though they didn't ask for 
a sign. They were given a sign and they told them and they hurried up. They hurried and went to the village. And guess what? There was sure there was somebody else there that had given birth. But how many had given birth in a stable? And their child would be laying in the manger. Only one, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No, they searched and they looked. They probably went everywhere. And they went and when they got there, there was that baby. They were so excited. They, look, our last verse says, after seeing him, the shepherd told everyone what happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. Now, if the lowly shepherds can tell of the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being born in this world, come to save us, not, not a great warrior being raised up, no, a baby, a tiny baby, a baby that didn't even have, have his own roof, as people say, didn't have their own home, didn't have the baby there. But guess what? Mary was sitting there. She carried all that in her heart because she had been told what was going to happen. So you see, when we follow God's plan, God has a blessing just for you. You do what Christ tell you because he's got a blessing just for you. Like these lowly shepherds. They, they believe because see, they had been told about the Messiah was coming. Now the Jewish people knew a Messiah was coming, but they weren't expecting him to come as a child, let alone being born in a stable. You know, Jewish people had to, had a little arrogance about themselves. They felt like they were it and everybody was going to be like them. No, God chooses the low and the meek and the humble to bring forth what he wants done. He did this with the little peasant girl who had never been with a man, gave birth to our Savior. How many of us can see the, the goodness, the joy in that? If God did it back then, he's going to take care of us right now as long as we keep the faith in him and believe. Don't get distracted. Don't be don't follow behind all this um, flash and dash now. No, the Lord has already, he sent Jesus and he's coming back. And he's coming back for those who have faith in him and believe. And we will live with him forever. I can only imagine how those shepherds felt when they got there and they could see what the angels had told them, not nothing made up, not nothing twisted and changed to, to satisfy the, the angels. No, the angels was having a good time. They, the Lord had been, had been born. God brought forth his son through a virgin Mary. And all these things should make us all pause this season, during this time of the year, and think about the goodness of Jesus Christ, how he was born. They, it, this wasn't during the time when the three wise men came. By the time they came to him, because see those shepherds, they spread it. They, they told it. They, they talk about women can tell a whole lot. These men, these are men that told it. They put that out there till when, by the time the three wise men came, they, they had, it had spread all over Judea, everywhere. So this is what our lesson is about. It's about the birth of our Savior and how he come through a, a, a virgin birth and he was he come to save us. What a mighty God we serve. And to use these little shepherds, these poor people from Nazareth to bring forth our Savior. So don't discourage, don't get discouraged because it seems like some people have more than you. You have the best gift that was given to you that we celebrate and remember each year this time and that is the birth of our savior and lord jesus christ amen and i hope and i pray that your christmas or your uh hanukkah or your kwanzaa or your happy holidays be a great uh time with your family stay safe and keep warm and dry and until the next time, may God bless you, and I'll see you on the next occasion.